Everybody, welcome back to the Iron Oak Sawmill and the continuation of getting the BX1500 back to work. Uh, we have already done the seals and the pivots, got those all nice and leak proof, and now the tie rods and the steering cylinder are coming off. I've already done it, but we're going to show you how we did it. And also, we've got a shipment of new parts. Let's go check that out. All right, it's always good when you're working on your Kubota that you get a delivery from Messix. They're right here in Pennsylvania. At least some of their stores are. Let's see what we got in the box for today. Invoice. Don't want to know what it costs. No, I'm <laughs> okay. Here's our updated tie rod end assemblies. Let's get a look at one of them real quick. I keep you in the shot here all right so these are supposed to be the upgraded boots and uh yeah yeah i can see that that's much that's a different material for sure let's hope that it's a uh a lot stronger than the old stuff and uh gonna last me a bit longer it's my last shot at these the guy at the dealership the dealership local dealership Told me that if uh, they go bad, they go bad. Just let it go. So, giving it one last try. Doesn't matter, right and left are the same. So, we got two of those. And paper. Plastic. <laughs> Bubble wrap. Pull that out of there. there we go. There it is, guys. The new upgraded machine properly steering cylinder. Not we don't have to look like a drunk person driving around the yard. Hey, one thing I wanted to show you guys for these updated tie rods. I don't know if they're all the same now, but it's K1253-16604. Okay. Part number on the steering cylinder, K2063-16500-2. I think the 620 is a common number between everything because those numbers were not on the packaging. The 620 was not on the number in the packaging. So, of course, two tie rod ends are the same, left to right, doesn't matter. And, of course, the steering cylinder. All right, now let's get things disassembled and see what we got. All right, guys, what we need to do to do this the right way, or put it this way, if you're doing tie rod ends only, this is the proper uh, order in which to do this. If you're not, if you're replacing a cylinder like I am, I'm just pulling a whole unit off in one. I decided to change that and do it that way. Because once these are off, once this whole unit's off, I can measure these and match the measurement for the tie rod ends. Anyway, the way you would do this in order is, and hopefully it works for you, Pop this tie rod loose first by holding on to this tie rod, okay? Hold this tie rod here. All right, get a wrench on this side, pop this off. Reason being, once this one's off, there's flats down in here on the cylinder that are not, or I'm sorry, on the rod that are not on the other side, okay? You can put a wrench on this then, hold the rod and spin the other tie rod off. Reason being, right now, that's only about 3 sixteenths, maybe a quarter inch wide in there. You're not getting a wrench in there. <laughs> Unless you have a specialty wrench or you grind one down. And I do not have a specialty wrench, and I don't want to grind down a 22 millimeter wrench right now. So, And uh, let's get to work pulling this thing out from underneath here. This is the brackets for the steering cylinder. Two bolts right here, both 14s. Yeah, I don't know if you can even see what I'm pointing at there. It's kind of dark back in here. Two bolts, one here, 14 millimeter, one up here, and we got a on the other side as well. Now this cylinder, or these brackets, is the right and the left. The one on the other side actually is, uh, supports one of the hydraulic lines. So you can't really mix them up. So this would be considered right side, and then the other side's left side. Now let's get those 14s out of there, and uh, get this thing dropped down and pull the hydraulic lines off of it.
There we go. And there's the difference in the brackets. See, this is the one that goes on this side. This is supported or supports this. We're supported by that. Helps keep that cylinder from turning. Put it right on like this. Put that back on there. There we go. Just like that. You can see that. You can see that. There we go. That goes right on there. Fits around that fitting and uh, keeps the cylinder from spinning. All right, so that bracket's off. Of course, we've got our other bracket off. You can see the oil on it. So it's been leaking on one of the outer seals. I did not have access to the hydraulic lines. One of them, yes, the other one, no. Um, up inside there, could not access them. So it looks like we've got a fitting that's got to come off of here. So we're going to take this one off first. Take this one off, then we're going to take the fittings out, and we should be able to, uh, boy, I hope I can get that fitting out. That looks, that better be threaded in there, and uh, we'll get them back on, get them all sealed up. All right, guys, it's uh, a size I don't have here in this shop, but I do have the adjustable. Let me see. There we go. Okay. I'm always worried I'm going to break these fittings. Just want to make sure I wipe all this off that I'm not leaking or I'm not getting dirt inside of anything. Because we do have to take these off, the rest of the fittings off of here. Okay, we've got our duct tape here to tape over the hydraulic lines. I don't know how much leakage we're going to get out of these, but I don't want it pouring all over the floor or all over. Let's move my tray out of the way. Great. Now it's greasy. I can't get a hold of it. There we go. Don't mix your lines up. <laughs> Reason being, now I don't know if it makes a difference, but <laughs> if you reverse these lines, I have a funny feeling your, your steering is going to be reversed. So let's not reverse the lines. So this one's marked in yellow. I'm going to check the other one out, see what it's marked, if it is marked at all. Yeah, because they're, oh, they're both marked yellow. All right. The taped one. Okay. Huh? The taped one goes on the right. Okay. Sitting here in front of the tractor, okay. the taped one goes on the right. If you put them on backwards, you get you mix your lines up, you can revert your, your steering's gonna be reversed, I believe. All right, she's off. You got a couple of fittings to remove, put into the new cylinder. And we'll go from there. All right, we're over in the other shop. I'm gonna go ahead and get these fittings out of here. So might as well clean them up before I get them off. One good thing about this, I have a hydraulic hose fitting guy right down the road. So if you're watching this, buddy, appreciate all your help with hydraulic hoses. There we go. So that's the five eighths. Now, one of the ways you remember this, this straight fitting I'm taking off of here is in the direction that the flat is on the rod, the flat you can grab with a wrench. I'm really crazy about getting dirt in the hydraulic system, so I don't want to do that. So when I take these fittings out, I'm going to set them down on the bench on a clean rag. Let me spin that out. Let me look. Um... Now, I know I never repaired this before, and I <laughs> I know there's debate back and forth about this, but that sure looks like, uh, tape. it sure looks like tape to me. Mm -hmm. me now, on this style fitting, it has tape. On this style fitting, I forget the name of that type, there's no tape, so I think... These can get taped because this is your NPT fitting. So this would definitely need to pipe tape. And that's an NPT, it should be. And these are straight ones for the hydraulic fittings. These do not need tape. 5 8 or 16 millimeter to get this fitting off. This one is a 14 millimeter. Now hopefully I don't break this because that would be a bad day. There we go. And again, 
you can see it does have tape on it so we're going to go ahead and teflon tape these being sure not to get it anywhere down inside of here and uh yep and we'll leave the other ones dry okay that's it for that cylinder guys keep thinking i have to pull those tie rod ends off i don't let's put that back here out of the way Bring in our new cylinder and to keep it the same way here's the flats i'm talking about on the one end of the cylinder that's the flats where you can get your wrench on i'm going to keep that off to our left so i'm just holding this in the vise don't crank down on this guys no need to all right we're say have caps on here we're gonna do is take one cap off at a time all right guys teflon tape keeping it away from the end of the fitting you don't want this thing laying over into the hydraulic fluid Let's see if i can get a good shot of this hopefully it's focusing and my hands are in focus go around twice and notice I'm going in the same way that we're going to twist this into the fitting or into the steering cylinder. Wrap it the same direction like that. You're going to be spinning it in. That's the way you want the uh, Teflon tape to be wrapped around. That way when you put it in there and tighten it up, the Teflon tape stays on. It doesn't peel back off. Same with the 90 degree angle fitting. Keeping it back a little more. Go around about twice. And... Uh, should be good to go now remember which way the fitting was on uh, this one here was pointing in and it was tight so they really had to crank down on it okay now this is still moving in here guys so you know i don't have it super tight the rags just to keep it from scratching we got new paint on there Teflon taped up, sealed up, good to go. Tie rod ends. Got this one set at the same length, approximately. Might be a little long, I'll check it out. All right, measuring end to end. Five and 15 sixteenths. Loosen the jam nut, turn that in a little bit. Measure it again. A little too much. <laughs> About half of that last one. There we go. I'm not going to tighten that jam nut down just yet. I'll tighten it down once this is all together, but. All right. Again, loosen the jam nut, spin it out. I'm going to set this up to be the same length, of course. I'm going to guess right around in there. All right. Okay, guys, we got both tie rods the same length. Get the one started in over here. Put the other one in over here. What's nice about this, we'll just tighten them against each other. All right, guys. That's one nice thing about doing it this way. Once these are on, I don't see a backing out at all, so. Tighten it down, you're good to go. Tie rods are set to the proper length. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug the jam nuts up.
There you have it. Assembly complete. Wasn't that a thing of beauty, guys? Nothing like brand new. <laughs> All right, let's get it back over to the BX1500. Get this thing steering straight. Okay, guys. One thing I almost forgot. We got snap rings on here that need to go on the back onto the new cylinder. I did not get new snap rings for this. There we go. Yeah, I could use a bigger set of snap ring pliers. That's for sure. I guess I can't blame the craftsman. I'm probably not using the right tool for the job, but and of course that'll go back on right here. Okay, let's get that uh, placed on there in the proper spot. I like to have that open end up near the top so it's not dragging down in the dirt. If you're getting that far into the dirt, you got problems, but you could get a stick up there, jam against it, and pop it off of there. So if you put it up top, it's the best place to have it. Keep it stays protected up there. All right, let's get the other one off and get it swapped out. There we go, right about there. There we go. Hold on to your snap rings. Sometimes they go flying. And again, try to keep your snap ring end up near the top of the cylinder so it's not exposed to the sticks and whatnot down the ground. And there you go. Now we can install it. Like I said, I like to keep hydraulic stuff really clean. No tape on these fittings. You don't need it. All right, there, I feel a little better. I didn't want that just dangling down on the uh, on those hydraulic lines. Never a good idea. Now remember, our taped one, when we had a piece of tape on right here, just to tag it as it goes on to the right, onto that 90 degree fitting. Okay, what you can do before you put this entire setup back into the tractor is get just double check you don't have any leaks by you get all your fittings tight of course you uh start the tractor and slowly turn uh back and forth right to left uh you'll eventually feel the steering start to pick up and then the rod will start moving like it should or the, the cylinder or yeah the rod will start moving like it should back and forth and uh, that's bleeding the air out of the system. Uh, but don't go too far with it not connected. I don't know if it'll do any damage to the O-rings inside, but just go back and forth about three inches, two to three inches. Let the rod move two to three inches right to left. Keep going back and forth like that. Eventually you'll see the rod reacting as it should and um, you'll be good to go. And maybe once it's in the track, we'll go full stop to, to stop to stop. Because the, uh, the stops aren't within the cylinder. The stops are on each wheel. Okay? Let's get this thing mounted back up in here and uh, get everything hooked back up and get us a tractor back. Okay? Got our brackets. Okay, remember this one goes over here. So it's up against that fitting. Go up and over.
It's harder than that already. Oh, that's right. I didn't run it in all the way. The torque. I think the reason I put Loctite on these before, guys, because I had this off before we did the front end, was it actually the bolts actually came loose. All right. I mean, I could just say assemble in reverse order from here. And uh, if you join us halfway through, you know, drop your tie rods in there. Put the castle nuts, put back onto the tie rods. But you gotta seat this. You wanna get in here, tighten this down to 45 Newton meters. There we go. Repeat the same on the other side and replace your cotter pins. Hey guys, guess what? One thing we still haven't picked up is the gear oil for the front end. <laughs> We're gonna have to run down to get some. Uh, I mean, I've seen guys use anything from the Super UDT oil. I think they just do that to keep it simplistic to 7590 weight. So that's what I had in here before the 7590. I'm gonna go with that. The front end worked great. I see little to no wear in there at all, even with the leak and the lower oil levels we had in here. So the 7590 to me did a great job of protecting it. We're gonna keep it on there. And uh, let's go get that now. All right, finally made it back. Got ourselves some Mobile One. 75140, great, I grabbed the wrong stuff, didn't I? 7590, I grabbed one wrong bottle. Hopefully two wrong bottles, because I might need a 7590. All right, that was mixed in with the 75. We'll put that right back in the bag and return that one. Hope I got enough with what I got here. Anyway, wonderful. <laughs> 7590 at the recommendation of some dealers. They would rather see 7590 than the uh, Super UDT transmission hydraulic fluid that they normally use for everything else. Now we pull our fill plug off here. All right, guys, continuing on with the project. And this one I didn't show you, but I decided to because I found very little information on it, especially for the BX1500. In fact, I found no information for the BX1500. But we did a coolant flush and fill, okay? Drain, flush, and fill. Of course, you have your overflow bottle or whatever you want to call it here. On ours, that was empty. So as you can see, it's at the upper mark now. But in order to drain this, I saw pull the bottom radiator hose. I saw pull the block a drain plug. Uh, and that was on other tractors, not on this particular machine. So this does have a radiator drain. Deb, if you could hold that light right there. Right there, that little Phillips head looking thing. Let me see if I can. Yeah. Right there, that little Phillips head looking thing. That's your radiator drain. Take a long Phillips screwdriver, come in through out here, get in there. Slight angle, but it should come right off. I didn't have any trouble with mine leaking afterwards so far. And uh, yeah, no issues. And here on the other side, work our way around here. This is on the uh, left side. You have your block drain right here. Oops, hang on a second. And right there is your block drain. Uh, 17 millimeter, pop that out. 
Antifreeze goes everywhere. There's nowhere to, there's no drain hoses on this to pick it up and run it anywhere. So just have a big flat pan underneath the front of this thing to catch your antifreeze and the usual drill. It's not good for animals, so you don't want it laying, you don't want it getting all over the place. So that's your block drain. Oh, can you hold this? I just want to make sure everybody can see this. That's your block drain right there. Now again, this is on the BX1500. You got your dipstick tube here, you got your one fuel filter here. Right there. And hopefully this is focusing. I do believe it is. But uh, that's how you get it drained. What I did was drained out the radiator, filled it back up with distilled water. Please use distilled water. Ran it for a little while. Um, opened that drain again and the block drain. Let it cool down, of course. There's no the drill of the radiators. Fill it up. Run the water through for a while. Let it cool down. Open before. Don't open the cap first. Open that drain down there. Open the the, the block drain over here. Then crack that loose. Because in the book, on the in the engine book, it tells you to open them simultaneously. Then open the cap. I did find that information search around the web as well. That was for the Kubota engine manual, not the Kubota tractor manual. So. But what that'll do is allow it to flush out both of those at the same time. And I did that three times, emptied it, put the plugs back in, filled it up with the still water, ran it to operating temperature, shut it off, let it cool down, open the drain plugs, and then pop the cap. When you pop the cap, that's when it's going to gush and you usually end up with a mess. So I had sawdust on the floor and a big drain pan. So we called it all. Just got to get it cleaned up now. All right. But I just wanted to point that out because I found nothing on, I don't find much for these BX 1500s. So I'm hoping this video helps a lot of guys too. And one other thing we just got done doing is, okay, going underneath the tractor here towards the back end. You know, you got your hydraulic filter. So we just fit, we just changed this out. Your drain plug, um, you're shining on the back of come in above my hand like this. There we go, sorry. That's your drain plug on the BX1500 on the rear end. I know it's hard to see. Let me see. You got your filter there. Directly back, it's the lowest bolt on the, on, the, on, the, on the transmission back there. That's another 17 millimeter. That's your drain. Uh, this took almost 11 quarts to refill. So, drained it there. You pull your dipstick out or your fill cap off on the rear end. Let's take a look over there. Around the back here. Here you go, Dan. Uh, either my eyes are out of focus or this camera's not focusing tonight. Right here is your dipstick, of course. Around the back side. And you've got, let me see, underneath it here. That's your fill point right there. You need a long neck funnel. I brought it up here and strapped it to the back of this. And uh, there we go. Now it's focusing. I don't know. This thing is just its not focusing right with, this, with the bad light out here tonight. But that's where you check it. That's where you fill it. And you know where the drain is. And you know where the filter is. We also did... Engine oil filter. I don't know if I showed these earlier. I may or may not have. Engine oil filter here on the sign. Uh, of course, everything's got the hours on it and the date on it. Over on this side, we may have covered this before in a previous video, but we did our fuel filter here. There was also another one underneath. Again, hours and the date. What else do we do? Yeah, the, un the other one underneath. Let's give you a reference here. There's your hydraulic filter. I'm on the other side of the tractor now. Come forward. There's your other fuel filter there. There's your lift pump. So right next to your lift pump, there's your other filter. So it's got twin filters on here for the fuel. And uh, they've both been replaced. Okay, just, so, just so you know. Again, here's your front pivot bolt, which uh, I'm probably going to be replacing the seals on that again for the third time. 
and hopefully the final time since we're not overloading this thing like we used to. Right there, that's your oil drain plug. Bottom of the pan right sure. here. So, in good shape with that. One more thing, guys. I got this back on now and I just realized I never showed you how to take it off. Fuel filter was on this side, oil filter's on the far side. Way to get this cowl off is to open your hood, take loosen these two nuts up to the top. One, two, loosen those up. You don't have to take them off because this is slotted here. Pull this bolt, this bolt, and disconnect your headlight wires. One on the top, one on the bottom, one on each side. Okay, and slide this forward, slide this whole thing forward, then uh, close the hood, close this back down, and pull it off the rest of the way. It might take a little bit of maneuvering to get it out of there, but you'll get it out. But that gives you easier access to the oil filter, it gives you definitely access to the, uh, to the fuel filter on this side, the block drain, and to the radiator drain as well. Sorry about that. I skipped over some stuff as I was getting into this. And, uh, yeah. But I just wanted to make sure you guys, I mean, you probably already knew it already, but I'm going to add it in here at the end, and uh, hopefully it helps out. Well, there you have it. All repairs made. All service done. Got the new front end. No leaking oil. Steering feels great now. It's awesome. It's a lot smoother, for one. A lot easier. And no wonky steering where it's wandering all over the place new engine oil and filter new air filter two new fuel filters new hydraulic oil and new hydraulic filter and uh went over a few other things just to make and she got a bath <laughs> sprayed it down with simple green hosed it down got a lot of the grease and whatnot off of it but it's looking a lot better we're we have the turf tires on now, but of course we're going out to a uh, skidding job later today. We've got to skid some logs over to a log pile. So we got the rig set up on there. We'll be putting the uh, skidding tongs on the back. We also have to move the trailers around a bit because the following day we're going to be loading that with lumber, loading this onto the small landscape trailer and taking that off to a job. We'll use this to unload the lumber with the front end loader, of course, and the forks from Be Expanded. And then we're going to be using that loader also to move driveway stone on that same job. Move some driveway stone, fill in some potholes. All right. But hopefully you guys found this uh, this video educational, helpful, whatever you're going to look at it to get your BX1500 done. We have every other BX tractor in the world on YouTube, but not much for BX1500. So that was a <laughs> hopefully covered a good amount for everybody. Uh, we may have broken this video up into smaller bits. And we may not. Depends. I'll see what it looks like in editing. If it gets too long, we'll break it up in a couple of different videos. There's three different videos. But there she is. All ready to go. Got another season of work ahead for it. Not as difficult work as we used to because we do have the L2501. So this thing's going to be more of the grass mowing, light duty work that it should be. Right, everybody, that'll wrap it up here at the Nine Oaks Sawmill and the service and repair of the BX1500. Ready to go for another season of work. Um, if you like this kind of video or any of the other videos we show here on Iron Oak Sawmill, go ahead and hit that like button, share it with some friends, and hey, while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Definitely appreciate that. If you're interested in any Iron Oak Sawmill merch, check that in our store link. You can see t shirts, sweatshirts, uh, hoodies, uh, stickers, coffee mugs, all kinds of stuff. Ladies and men's apparel. So we're good to go on both. All right. But uh, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, if you have any uh, questions about what we're doing here at the mill with the tractor, with the mill itself, with any of the equipment we're using here, be sure to put it down in the comments section. We're glad to help you out. And as always, thanks everybody for stopping out, and we'll see you at the next time.